Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Christ is risen. He truly is risen. Today is the second Sunday after the feast, the resurrection, after Easter. But today is also, what day, what's today's date? Anyone know what today's date is? April? Wait, what? 23rd, right? April 23rd. Anyone know what's important about April 23rd? It's the feast of St. George. Givargi Sahada. On April 23rd, 303, 303 AD. So about, you know, 250 years after Jesus Christ. Okay? 250 years after Jesus Christ, 303 AD. There was a soldier named George. He was born to uh, he had a Greek mother. His, his parents were Christian. They lived in, in, the, in that Syria, Cappadocia area in Turkey. And uh, it was a time of Emperor Diocletian. Emperor Diocletian, once he took power, be, became, he made Christianity illegal. So if you were a Christian, you were going to lose your property. You were going to lose your, your livelihood. You were going to be put in jail and potentially killed martyr. Now, George, at this time, was a high-ranking official in the Roman army. He was a tribune. This means that being a tribune, he got a very good salary from the Roman government. It means that he had a, a property for himself. He had, like, everything was set for him. He was well taken care of, and he had everything that he needed. And he has accomplished, in order to become a tribune, accomplished worldly success but then he was faced with the decision george was what a christian parents were christian he was a christian now he is in this very you know prestigious rank but the emperor who is in charge is now making an edict that says that all christians must be persecuted made it illegal to be christian so george had a choice to make a decision to make. And that decision was, should he sacrifice his title as tribune, his reputation, his property, his home, all his belongings? Should he sacrifice his life for his Christian faith? Should he sacrifice his life for his Christian faith? What do you think George decided? Obviously. <laughs> We call him George the Great Martyr. Givargi Sahada. Sahada means martyr, right? He's the martyr. So he chose what? He chose that more than his title, more than his reputation, more than all the worldly success that he has, more than his property, more than his life itself. Jesus Christ was more important than that. So he becomes a martyr of the church. Now, if you pay attention to our prayers, especially like our intercessionary prayers, the Kukleons for the saints, and also if you look through any of the other kolos during the, the, the week, during the daily prayers, you'll see that often in our prayers, there are places in our prayers where there is a rhetorical question. You know what that rhetorical question is? It says, it asks the martyrs, martyrs, why did you sacrifice your life? Why did you sacrifice your life? So this is a question that we have to ask ourselves. Why did St. George sacrifice everything? All his worldly success, all his worldly comfort, his life itself, why did he sacrifice it for Jesus Christ? He gave it all up for Jesus Christ. Why did he give it up? And what, what's the answer? It's a rhetorical question because we should know, right? The answer is what? Because Jesus is the greatest treasure there is. There's nothing more valuable than our relationship with God. There's nothing more valuable than that. Now, it's not easy to live our lives in this world putting Jesus as first and putting him as the most important above everything else. It's not easy to do that. I mean, we fail to do this all the time, right? 
I mean, it's very easy for us to say, Jesus is the greatest treasure. He is what we should be aiming for. He is the most important. Our priority, you know, you can ask, you, you, your kids will ask you, daddy, mommy, what's the priority list? And you'll say, God, family, then your studies, and then this. But how many of us actually put God first? We can easily say God is first priority list. But is he really the first priority list? Is he what we put everything else above? Now, this, you know, we just finished Great Lent and we just went through Holy Week. And I'm hoping that everyone in this church uh, observed the Great, great Lent, the knowing you fasted and that you were increasing your prayers. And then, you know, I saw many of you in Holy Week and that you were here praying. And, and I, I, I hope that it was a blessed experience. But there is a chance that after doing all the fasting, after doing all the prayers, you feel as if, I didn't get anything. I didn't get anything. I, there's nothing. I did the prayers. I did the fasting. Nothing, nothing happened. And the thing is, our failure to find that something within our prayers and our fasting the center of that, the, the center the, it, it is, goes back to, are we putting God first? Are we putting God first? And there is a key to unlocking our prayers and our fasting. Prayers and fasting are good, but without this one key, prayers and fasting don't do anything. And St. Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So, and 13, specifically chapter 13. In the end of chapter 12, he says, I will show you a better way. I will show you a better way. And what is that way that St. Paul teaches us how to correctly be a Christian, how to correctly fast, how to correctly pray, how to correctly live a Christian life? Because in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, St. Paul talks about this one thing. This is the key to our Christian life. What is it? What's the key to our Christian life? Anyone know what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says? Anyone? What? Love. Love is patient. Love is kind. The whole chapter, St. Paul talks about love. Without a deep and utter love, without a deep and utter dependence on God. When I say the word love, I'm saying that in the way that a child loves his parents, in the sense that they have nothing else, that is the love that we are called to have for God. Without loving God with, and this is, what is the first commandment, the most important commandment Jesus says? What did he say? Love who? Love God with what? All your, all your stomach? No. What? With all your? Say it. Heart. What else? Not only with all your heart, more than that. With your soul, with your mind, with your strength. All of your strength. How many of us have that love? If you don't have that love, your prayers and your fasting... <laughs> It's very hard to really do, to, 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 to gain something for that because we're missing the key. Love is the key. Love is the key for our Christian life. Love is the key for unlocking our unity with God. Love is the key for all of it. Because the first commandment is to love God and the second commandment is to love each other. Interior love and exterior love. It's not simple. To love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. Now I have a simple analogy, a simple story to explain what it is to pray and to fast and to do all these things in church without love. One day, a regular weekday, kids come home from school. I'm busy working in my, on, you know, for work on my laptop in my office, typing away. Come down to check on the kids. Kids, you hungry? Yeah, yeah, daddy, I'm hungry. What do they want? What do all kids want? Chicken nuggets, right? Chicken nuggets. 
Not the Denver chicken nuggets, just the chicken nuggets. The chicken nuggets. They want chicken nuggets. So now what I do, I go to the freezer. I, I'm not coaching them. I'm not making chicken curry. She'll make the chicken curry and the beef curry and everything. I go into the freezer and warm up something, right? So I go into the freezer. I take out the chicken nuggets. I put it in the oven and I go back to work. 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes later, Alexa knocks on my door. Daddy, where's the food? We're hungry. <laughs> oh, right? So then I go downstairs. Oh, chicken nuggets should be ready. I go look at the chicken nuggets. What happened? I forgot to plug in the oven. The chicken nuggets are still cold. They're still cold because I didn't, I didn't put any heat to it. The oven is not on. The oven is not on. The chicken nuggets are not made. I did all the actions. I did. I, I took the chicken nuggets out of the freezer. I put it in the oven. I did all the actions. I did the prayer and the fasting, but without what? The heat, without turning on the oven, dinner's not ready. Dinner is not ready. And so I can pray and I can fast and I can do everything. But if I don't turn that oven on, if I don't have love in my heart, not just any love, love, utter, utter, utter dependent love, love where all of my heart, my mind, my soul, my body, everything is given to God. When I have that love, then the heat is on. Then there's transformation. And the thing is, I can't leave you just telling you, okay, love more. <laughs> because there is this one thing about love. And how do we get to that point of loving God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, and all our strength? How do we get there? Jesus says, truly I say to you, Unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you become like what? Like what? Children. In today's gospel, I don't know if anyone caught it. Jesus says to them, while he lays on the shore, what does he say to them? What does he call them? Children. He says, children. Have you any food? They worked all night to do what? To get food. And what were they able to? No. But when Jesus addressed them as children, and they became like children and answered God as a child, God gave them exactly what they needed, and more than they needed, an abundance of what they needed. So the thing is, we need to become like children in our prayers and in our fasting. We must strip off our self-reliance. We must strip away our titles because the thing is, we're coming, to, we're coming before this altar. I'm coming before this altar. God, I'm a great priest. I'm, I, I did all these things and I have all these things. And if I'm coming to God with all my titles, with my resume, my CV, with all of my degrees, with all of my accomplishments, if I'm coming to God and going, God, am I coming like a child? No. no. We need to put away all of our pride, all of our accomplishments, all of our ego, and become like a dependent child saying, Daddy, can you give me food? I want us to do one last thing. I want us to pray together right before at this time. And so if you can all close your eyes and bend your heads with me. And as before I say this prayer, I ask that I want you to take and to hold in your in your in your minds and the picture of yourself as a child. Let's say you're a four year old child. Can anyone you know, look and think about how you looked as a four-year-old child? And with that image, I want you to pray this along with me, okay? I'll say the prayer, but I want you to silently recite this prayer along with me, okay? Oh Lord, our God, I am your little child. Allow me into your presence with the face and heart of a child. 
and receive this praise that flows from my heart, my soul, my mind, and all my strength. There are always so many worries, so many stresses, so much hardship, so many challenges that distract me. I have forgotten to rely completely on you. Do not give me more than I can handle, for I am just your little child. Bless my prayers and fill me with your love so that I may focus on you during this holy kurbana, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Indeed, Jesus. All glory and honor to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.